good morning everyone and welcome back to the channel it's monday and i hope that it's a start to an extremely productive week of harvesting and all sorts of different farm work i was really pumped to come to work this morning we were going to harvest a field of soybeans that had a few different trials in it that i was really looking forward to seeing the data however mother nature isn't exactly cooperating between a little bit of light rain and some heavy rain in the distance and overcast weather it's really kind of dampened our plants. With soybeans being so sensitive to added moisture and these beans we're going to harvest heading to the elevator, we really can't afford much more rainfall on it. It could easily take that moisture up into the high teens, if not 20s, which would absolutely derail our plans to harvest any kind of soybeans today. Oh well, dealing with mother nature, you really never know what to expect. That's why we pencil things in here and not ink them on. Things change very quickly. We may have to consider shifting gears, harvesting some corn this week. Tomorrow they're calling for an even higher chance of heavier rain which would definitely slow us down it's not a big deal at all though we're still very early in the season ahead of schedule compared to most years so we'll just play it by ear before we see what kind of trouble we can get into today everyone make sure you hit that like button and leave a comment down below it is one of the easiest and cheapest ways that you can support the channel every time that you interact with a video leave a like leave a comment it helps me out a ton and i am greatly appreciative of all your support Let's get to work. A good rainy day task is catching up on all of your deferred maintenance. On one of these 13 inch wheat heart augers that we've been loading the soybean bin with, the chain that drives the secondary part of the swing away pit had kind of worn out a little bit. We noticed that over the first couple days of harvesting. So we replaced it with a new chain that is a little more stout. So hopefully it won't cause any more issues. Can you tell that the backhoe has been piling lime? It's not like it's completely covered in it. Pretty much anywhere that dry lime could accumulate, it's done that. And someone even managed to get the radiator packed full, which is not good. So I'll probably have to clean that out. Shoot, there's probably half ton of lime on this backhoe alone. We need that. And that doesn't make any sense right there. I'd like to have seen the operator do this because there's lime in places where there shouldn't be lime. I figured that we might as well take the scenic route bringing this backhoe home, coming up south of the farm got ground on both sides of the road here. I want to check out the crop a little bit. Not like we have a whole lot to do this morning. Corn looks pretty good. And our Asgrow 38XF1Bs have turned quite a bit in the last week. They're actually catching up to those Pioneer 39s that started turning much earlier. I'm really excited to harvest this field. I think they're going to be extremely good beans. One, the genetic potential is extremely high with the newest germplasms. And two, that ground thrives on a very wet growing season, which we've had. The backhoe just isn't quite as fun as driving the grain cart. Every piece of equipment's important though. You can make it fun. It's a nimble little thing. Joy ride's over. I'm gonna have to have a talk with the lime relocation crew. I've never heard of a radiator that enjoys being clogged up, let alone on a piece of equipment that already struggles with temperature enough. It's about 10 a.m. We're up north scouting out these 3-1 beans that were dry yesterday. Still a little bit on the moist side today. The pods are still very tough, so it's gonna take a couple hours more to dry them out. That is, if it doesn't rain anymore. I don't believe this farm got as much moisture as we did down south at the main farm. We give it some time though, they'll probably cut. Disregard what I just said about those soybeans, Dad and I talked about a little bit more in the truck. He thinks that unless the sun comes out up north almost immediately, those beans probably aren't going to cut today. We're certainly not going to hold our breath to the prospect of cutting those beans. We are going to try to harvest some crop. We're going to switch the S780, put the corn head on, head up north, and get a corn that we want to try. Check. There's oil on the stick. Good enough for me. We've got two twins hanging out right here. Grain cart tractor, tillage tractor. Has the vertical till on it though. At some point though, we'll probably put that vertical till on this tractor. But of course, the grain cart has to go. That won't happen until the end of harvest. The corn head's on, jack stands are up, feed accelerator's slowed down, knives are out, chopper's slowed down, S780 is ready to try some corn out. Not sure what the moisture is gonna be, but we will see. 
What can I help you with? What do we need to set? Harvest setting? Here. Corn. Okay. It's hard being the tech guy, but someone's got to do it. We had some goodies arrive in the mail this weekend that's going to make our harvest operations even easier than they already were thanks to Midland Radio. Our six decibel gain antenna and an external speaker to amplify the sound out of our radio station. They say that size doesn't matter and I do agree for the most part. I do not believe that applies to radio antennas though. We can finally get rid of our nub and replace it with the nice long tall antenna that will offer better reception the grain cart in the tractor and hopefully overall better sound quality i can't recommend this antenna enough i've noticed versus the standard three decibel ones that it makes a world of difference besides that right there speaks for itself this little nub right here does an impressive job for how small it is you just can't replace this amount of length though. We'll put this short thing in our treasure chest in case the long one gets ripped off on a tree limb or something. If any of you watching this video are looking to upgrade your communications for this harvest, I believe that Midland Radio has a great sale going on right now. I think you'll save a pretty significant amount of money if you spend up to a certain amount. I cannot speak enough about how great their products are. If you're in the market for some of this hardware, follow that link down below in my description and go get some equipment. Jeff's going to the field, so I guess that means that we should probably go to the field. We're a little bit slower than the semi and faster than the combine. I'd say it's our time to shine. Testing, can you hear me? There's some black smoke billowing in the distance over there. It could either be a combine or a pile of tires. Either way, I'm not gonna go check. Every time I see a line cut in the road or in the ditch from a flat tire, I always wonder whether or not the driver knew the tire was flat in the first place. Probably so. It's hard to not know when your tire is that flat. If it's carving into the ground, that's quite a bit of a resistance. That's actually pretty neat. In Operation Center, I can actually keep track of that S780 because it has a 4G LTE modem. And I have one in this tractor as well. So you can see there's the main farm there. Here's the route we took. I'm about halfway up and there's the combine at the field. Let's hop in and do a little bit of a remote connect to the display and see how the corn's doing. Not too shabby. 240, 260, 250. Hey, that's the same green card I have. Another one of our neighbors. Look like they picked a lot of corn around here. I bet it was pretty high yielding. I do know that they grow really good corn. And there is our stop right up there. Dad is picking the ends off. Open her up. Now that I think about it, some of you are probably very confused about what has unfolded so far today. Because when we ended the last video, we were actually still at a soybean field. We'd shut down for the day. We ran out of dry beans. We left the combines there. We took one to town. As I had mentioned in that video, my sister was getting married on Saturday, which was two days ago, the day after the Friday where we ended cutting beans. Obviously, we didn't do much that day. On Sunday, let's just say that everyone was in a very low energy state. However, we did end up going out and cutting the rest of those beans. I didn't think it was worth taking the camera out to, so we just ran the 780, cut the rest of those wet beans. They yielded extremely well. Just like I predicted, both of those two fields we left, the remaining beans were 80 to 90 bushels, some spots almost 100 bushel an acre, so it brought the averages up on those fields quite a bit. Those of you with a keen eye may have also noticed that the S670 is nowhere to be found, and that is because it is still getting the fuel pump replaced. I knew that that was a somewhat major job. I did not know that it was an eight hour job though, so they just finished it up a little bit ago. We're not going to worry about picking it up because this corn is very high yielding and I don't think, even though we have an eight row on the S780, that we're going to have any problem keeping up. We'll swap these trucks in no time. Dad's going to continue to open up this corn field. We're going to park the auger wagon and go get a couple other trucks. I've got the power consumption of a small city in this tractor, so every time I leave I shut the battery off. Peace of mind, no dead batteries. You can tell that the combine drivers are spoiled by the grain cart because first time dumping on a semi and they make a mess. That's more than I've spilled at this point in the year. Back in the office. The least efficient part of a cornfield is always the end rows. 
especially because there's not very many good places to dump. A lot of times you just have to sit in place and catch the grain as opposed to doing it on the go. Just getting warmed up in the grain cart for corn harvest. Don't even have both combines rolling. I think that we may have reached the peak of the day. Combines running full speed, sun shining, winds blowing, it's warming up, and it's lunchtime. It can really only go downhill from here. I don't quite have the mounting in place for this external speaker for the Midland radio. It'll be fine right there. I'll get it figured out, but it is hooked up, so I'm excited to see how it does. There are a few things you can always look forward to when you work on a farm. Lunchtime, nap time, quitting time, and payday, in no specific order. And just like that, Dad and I have already caught the trucks. Probably need to go get the other semi. It only took about 20 minutes, but the truck's finally back. Jeff said there's quite a line at the elevator. Need some more drivers. When there's a long line at the elevator, you squeeze every bushel you can onto the semi. That right there is the only spot in this field that we didn't have to replant after it was entirely submerged in May. Let's see how the new stock stompers are doing. Not exactly an expert in this category of residue management. They seem to be laying the stocks over pretty good. We're not running a chopping corn head, so you really can't expect a lot of fine material out here. All it's doing is running through the snap and rolls. Stocks are laid over pretty good at the roots. I'll take that. That's better than just having a million different spikes sticking out of the ground. This should help this material break down much faster. When we come out here and work it another couple weeks, it'll already be decomposed a little bit. We'll work it, chop it up some more, and then it'll have a nice powder. In today's edition of Strange Things You Find in a Cornfield, a donut floating. Seems like a very fitting place for that. I know you Case IH folks wouldn't understand it, but when you run John Deere equipment, you always get random spectators. Everyone loves the green and yellow. And wow, do we know how to put on a show. Loaded the car right in front of them. I told that on the radio, you better not spill any because it might end up on Facebook. This is just one of the perils to haul into the elevator. You never know how much of a bottleneck it's going to create. Regardless though, this just reiterates the point about how nice it is to have grain bins. We're hauling to the elevator, we're constantly waiting on our trucks to get back. At least if they were at our grain bin, we'd know what was holding this up for so long. They dry out quite a bit. Now their pods are dry. Oh, those are probably cut. That is the one silver lining to having the bean field you're keeping your eye on pretty close to the cornfield is when you're waiting on trucks, you can drive over and see how close they are to harvesting. We're gonna unhook this corn head here, switch the combine over, take it to the bean field, try cutting them. Gotta make sure we get our scraps. There's always a few sitting in the feeder house that you lose when you unhook. Every kernel counts out here, folks. Gotta pay for that green equipment somehow. I'm obviously not one of our mastermind combine operators, but I can tell you this just from working, that these jack stands on both sides of the corn head are such a nice thing to have, especially with all these factory installed stock stompers. Normally, if you were to unhook something like this, you'd actually have to take all those stompers off so you don't wear them out from putting the corn head against them on the ground. Now, if it rains a couple inches, this corn head may be in the ground. We'll cross that bridge when it comes. Wow, we couldn't have timed that any more perfectly combine's about to pull up the field and there's the draper just came up from the south our farm is about five miles straight south on this road right here beans good rain bad it's only a mile mile and a quarter the green cart is just right over there you can see the semi just another one of those days with a lot of back and forth Let's load this truck. We'll still have some corn left on the cart, which is unfortunate. Unfortunately, the grain cart's not going to be of any use yet in that bean field because we still have got just shy of 300 bushels of corn. And one of our truck drivers just had to leave for a little bit. Bad timing, but we'll make do. The results are in, and surprisingly, these beans are testing 16%, so we're not going to be able to cut them. Sometimes you just have to get in the water to see what it feels like, and in this time, it's a little too wet for us. We're gonna be cutting it close with that rain anyways. I can actually see the downpour probably a mile and a half to the west. It's headed northeast, so it should actually miss us. Time to unhook the draper and completely reverse everything we just did. Thankfully, it's not a very laborious process switching over the combine.
Perfection on a farm is usually a moving target. You gotta be adaptable to be successful. Oh! Time to break out the third truck. Old Faithful. Plenty of oil. Nothing quite like that Caterpillar power. Hopefully the transmission doesn't take a crap on us. On the road. This looks like my stop. Due to our current logistical problems, this may be my last ride in the grain cart for the rest of the day. Katie's probably gonna take over the operator's seat here and I'm gonna be on super trucker duty. We'll see how that goes. I'm not quite sure if this is a promotion or a demotion, but I'm always happy to play my part here. We've all got different shoes to fill. I guess I'm a truck driver now. Those stupid grain cart drivers are always overloading the darn truck. I can't even tarp it. Taking a sample. The line isn't terribly long. It wraps around these other bins here. I would imagine they're taking a long time to dump though. There's Jeff weighing in right now, which is not a good sign for our harvest operations today, considering that I'm still probably two thirds of the way back from the pit. Ah, uh, finally, the light at the end of the tunnel. This definitely makes me miss the green cart. This is really a two part problem. One, everyone and their brother is picking corn right now. If more people were cutting soybeans, there'd be a lot less corn waiting here in line. It's just a lower volume crop, so it takes up much less capacity. And two, they're trying to load a grain train, which I think is slowing them down because they're loading straight out of the dump. Good for them and bad for us. We're almost there. Here's an hour I'm never gonna get back. This really makes me wish that we had dry beans because we would've been in and out of there in five minutes with beans as opposed to 60 minutes plus with corn. That just goes to show you the harvesting capacity of Central Illinois. These combines can pick a lot of corn. And I'll probably be back here in another 20 minutes. Not quite sure who the dummy is who left home with this truck without fueling up the fuel tank, because it's on low fuel. That might have been a small miscalculation. Oh well. <laughs> the telltale signs of a rookie grain cart operator. Happens to us all, folks. That's exactly why I have the shovel on the grain cart. That's probably five bushels. That'll be fun to scoop up. One of my most memorable grain cart screw ups in one of my first seasons running it is I didn't unfold the auger all the way. And so I turned the auger on. There's a little bit of gap there between the top flighting and the bottom flighting. Opened the slide wide open, sped the RPMs up. And you guys would be really surprised at how far that auger wagon can shoot grain out. It's pretty impressive. Sucked to clean up, but I caught it soon enough where I only had 10 or 15 bushels on the ground. To be completely fair though, I'd rather be picking corn up off the ground than having to replace the slip clutch because she shut it off with a full auger and then tried to start it. It's a learning process, no worries. I better pay special attention dumping this time or I'm liable to do the same thing as Katie because I was making fun of her. Shoveling that up's gonna stink. I could probably use the exercise after sitting in the grain cart half the day and sitting in the truck for a couple hours and probably about to spend another 60 minutes in there. Now that truck was definitely loaded by a professional. Almost like a piece of artwork up there. You can't have transmission problems if you never leave top gear. Science. Oh boy, I shouldn't have mentioned the transmission. If any of you watching this video at this point know anything about a 10 speed Eaton Fuller Ultra Shift transmission, please let me know. It's been doing that for us. We've tried everything. I just sat on the scales for three minutes waiting for it to get into gear. On the bright side though, there's not much of a line left. I would say that they probably finished off that train. And I think that's a good thing for everyone. And this truck is a piece of junk, come on. It doesn't make any sense. There's no rhyme or reason as to why it does it or when it does it. I've literally looked at everything. And just it'll randomly pop into gear. I've been sitting here for probably two and a half minutes at this point. This can be good for the truck, but my only solution is to set the brakes and barely tap the accelerator so it never pulls itself out of gear. I wonder if the person who invented the Dorito got a Nobel Prize. If they didn't, there's really no reason for the award to exist. Really revolutionary. You know, I'm kind of like the designated hitter. I don't get to go out in the field, but when you move a lot of weight, you put me in. You can't argue the fact that that is not an incredible view. Golden hour in the Midwest during harvest season across a nice field of soybeans. The new combine has been anointed with calf corn. 
I would say that that tile hole probably played a role. I've had quite a bit of time to sit and stew on it at this point, and I would definitely say that the truck driver was a demotion compared to the grain car. No big deal, because I've been promoted, and just in time to turn the lights on. Check. Marty's also impressed me with his cap corn. Wouldn't expect any less. It is hard to beat this time of night. Love watching the combine work after dark. It's pretty easy to understand why people romanticize harvest season. Beautiful sunsets, perfect weather to be outside, watching the combines roll, the dust fly. Everything about it is just so perfect. Unless, of course, you're a grain cart operator and you're trying to keep up with the combine, which I should probably go do right now or I'm going to get in trouble. Stepping on the go in the dark. There's multiple levels going on here. I would assume because dad is dumping on me right now that we're probably about to quit for the night. Elevators closed down. There's not much more we can do other than load the trucks, dump them in the morning. I was somewhat right. We're loading the trucks. We're quitting for the night, except for, I guess, once you train someone else to run the grain cart, they kick you out all the time and you got to go use your CDL. Maybe I should have thought that through a little bit more. She's got air conditioning. I don't. They'll put a little over a thousand bushels on that cart, probably tarp it because there's a chance of rain and they'll shut down for the night. Goodbye, my ride. Ah. Come on, man, it's the end of the night. Don't do this to me. Just trying to go home. I missed another big perk of fall. Look at that moon out there. Looks like the curries are still hard at it picking corn. That's the green car we saw earlier. We're about a mile away from where we spotted it. Working on the night shift. Nothing quite like home sweet home. The old S670 is back at the farm for being under the night. They're showing your dealership. New fuel pump, and they put some new batteries in. I'm sure that'll be a cheap bill. Since there is a chance of rain tonight, we're going to go ahead and put this in the barn. When you have an opportunity to shed something, you might as well go ahead and do it. This is Home Alone Combine Edition. Boop, boop, boop. Get it nice and snug. Perfect. Quick break. The key. Well, folks, I think that's going to be it for this video. It was an impressively unproductive day of harvest. Sometimes that happens, although I think this may be a record for the last few seasons. We don't really have any control of what goes on at the elevator, so really can't get our panties in a bunch too much. Like I just said, there's a pretty significant chance of some strong storms moving in tomorrow. If we get a considerable amount of rainfall, it's probably going to shut us down for a couple days. At the very least, it's going to postpone bean harvest even farther. Corn, we can continue on tomorrow because we still haven't even finished that field. And it's not even that big of a field, which is what makes it so impressive that it's not done. Anyways, that's definitely enough farming for one day. I appreciate you all tuning in. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more. And comment down below if you have any questions. You know I love to talk about farming. Have a great night, everyone. Peace!